change to bed to a large parade. Portadown Orange Parade goes ahead. Security forces seal Drunkwe and nationalist Garvahi Road. Riotings and hijackings follow the decision. In Coal Island, an IUC woman is shot and injured. And in the monster hurling final, Claire save a victory over Tipperary. Good evening. A policewoman has been injured in a gun attack on an RUC patrol in Coal Island in County Tyrone. She was part of a three-member patrol sitting in an RUC vehicle outside the local police station when a man opened fire with a shotgun. There have also been disturbances in many other nationalist areas following the decision to allow 1,200 Orangemen parade down the Garvahi Road in Portadown. It became apparent that the parade would go ahead when security forces moved in to seal off the Garvahi Road early this morning. A sombre Ronnie Flanagan met the media this morning for the formality of announcing a decision, the nature of which was already evident on the ground. He said his choice had been for the lesser of two evils. I was left with a stark choice, how much life is liable to be lost, and that loss of life was liable to be in the Catholic community. These are the stark choices I was left with yesterday. That was the decision I made. He said Mo Molum had worked heroically to find agreement and she said that the eventual decision had been taken with regret. I know many in the nationalist community will be angered by this decision. It has been dictated by circumstances. I would have preferred it otherwise. Nevertheless, I appeal to all in the nationalist community to understand that overall public safety across Northern Ireland has to be the Chief Constable's concern. Your voice is not ignored. I understand your feelings and I will address them in legislating on this issue. I'm only sorry that option was not open to us this summer. But Dr. Molum's words were little comfort to parishioners on the Garvahi Road, prevented from going to their own church this morning. As she spoke, they were attending an emotional open-air mass where parish priest Sean Larkin preached a message of Christian charity. Love your enemies. Love those who hate you and persecute you. It's the way of love. It's not the way of violence. It's not the way of hatred. In this special mass, Father Larkin matched the gesture to the word. On the other side of Portadown, there was a festive atmosphere as the Orange Parade eventually moved off from the strongly loyalist town centre, their supporters secure in the knowledge that this year the decision had gone their way. There too was David Trimble, although because of an agreement this year, he wouldn't be marching. The atmosphere grew more sombre as the parade approached Drum Cree Church and their traditional service. An hour later, the 1200 Porter Down brethren moved off towards the Garvahi Road, marching briskly in virtual silence as they neared the flashpoint. By now, the road was a virtual armed camp with residents kept well back. Ten minutes later, it was all over. The parade had reached the loyalist end of the Garvahi Road amid celebrations and congratulations. The security operation for Drum Creed 3 had been successful, but the bitter political recriminations were only beginning. As the army and police began to withdraw, the frustration of the nationalists who'd been hemmed in turned to violence. Feeling dejected and vengeful, many of the protesters began to riot. Withdrawing over a thousand police officers and soldiers who'd lined the Garvahi Road to ensure the safe passage of the Orange Parade proved to be quite difficult. As they slowly made their way down the road, they were persistently attacked. Within minutes, the troops opened fire, discharging at least 60 baton rounds. The man on the far right was hit. Later he showed how close it was to hitting him in the head. But the rioting continued. With those at the front holding wire meshes for protection. After about half an hour, the rioting subsided. When the troops left, vehicles were hijacked and set alight. Tonight, the fires still burn on the Garvahi Road, so the day has ended just as it began. 
No one can underestimate the sense of betrayal and alienation the people here now feel. In Coal Island tonight, a policewoman was shot as she sat in a patrol car in the town centre. Police say a gunman attacked her with a shotgun. Her injuries are not believed to be life-threatening. Near Lurgan, a gang of masked men, some of them armed, hijacked a train. They evacuated it before setting it alight. Northern Ireland Railway said the damage was in excess of £5.7 million. In other nationalist areas of the north, shots were fired by the IRA at a police patrol in South Belfast. No one was injured. Elsewhere in the city, a number of vehicles were hijacked and set on fire. Several thousand people took part in a march and rally in Andersonstown, protesting at the IUC decision on the Drum Cree march. Nationalist and Republican anger at the RUC's decision on the Drum Cree parade was seen on the streets of the north soon after the march went through. Over 200 nationalists had gathered in the Lower Ormo Road area of South Belfast to protest when an IRA gunman fired five shots at an RUC patrol near the Ormo Bridge. There are no reports of any injuries and the rally broke up peacefully. In West Belfast, several thousand people gathered on the Andersonstown Road. Hundreds of them entered the Caseman Park GAA grounds, where, to the cheers of the crowd, they walked around the pitch at half-time during the Ulster hurling final. They paraded to the police station and were addressed by the Sinn Féin president and local MP, Jerry Adams. He sent a strong message to the British Prime Minister, Mr Blair. But we are not going to put up with seeing our people so easily attacked as they were... Earlier, a number of vehicles were hijacked and set on fire in West and North Belfast. The attacks were condemned by the city's Deputy Lord Mayor, Ulster Unionist Councillor Jim Rogers, who had earlier observed the Drum Cree March. If people are unhappy with the decision taken about a parade, they have the right to protest, but within the law, that's not what we have seen in the last 24 hours. It's absolutely shameful, it's disgraceful, and I know through speaking to many people in our society, both religions, they are absolutely disgusted and they're demanding action to be taken by the police, the army and the government. In Derry, several thousand nationalists from the bog side have marched through the streets in protest at today's events in Drum Cree. The rally passed off peacefully. And in Newtown Butler and County Fermanagh, the IUC moved nationalist protesters off the road to allow an orange parade go ahead this evening. Those who marched on the streets of Derry tonight said they had come out to show their solidarity with the people of the Garvahi Road. It's about time that this stopped and there'll never be peace in this country unless the DUP and the Orange Order change their attitude towards the Celtics of this country. The organisers of the march here tonight say the purpose of it is to give those upset by the events of Drum Cree today a chance to vent their anger in a peaceful manner. And so far, things have passed off peacefully here. This is a dignified, peaceful protest. That's what everybody wants. But inevitably, uh, inevitably uh, feelings are running high. Earlier, there were a number of minor skirmishes between nationalist youths and the RUC, and there has been a higher than usual security presence. Meanwhile, the DUP has said the reaction of nationalists in the coming hours and days will be indicative of their attitude to the unionist basic human right to march. Now, having established that they can do that, it's now up to the nationalist community to show us what they mean by way of response. Do they accept our right to do that? Uh, or do they respond with violence as they did last year? Nationalist leaders, including the SDLP's John Hume, have appealed for calm in the coming days. The Taoiseach has said he's deeply disappointed by the British government's decision to allow the Orange March go ahead. Mr O'Hearn said the British Prime Minister Tony Blair had informed him this morning about the decision. He said he could well understand the sense of disappointment that nationalists were feeling. Despite some levity as the Taoiseach opened new facilities at his local sports centre this afternoon, there was no mistaking his deep concern about events in Porta Down. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? Nice indeed. It's beautiful here, but not anywhere else. After opening the new sports centre, Mr O'Hearn said he'd been informed of the Portadown decision by Prime Minister Tony Blair this morning. While he appreciated that contact, he was deeply disappointed by the Chief Constable's ruling, which was backed by Northern Secretary Mo Molem. I think that the decision today uh, makes life difficult for, for everybody. Uh, but we have to, I think, uh, understand the, uh, the nationalist position. We have to understand the, uh, the sense uh, of disappointment uh, that they have 
uh, today. Uh, but equally so, I hope that everybody on all sides can, can act with, with dignity and respect uh, for each other. Uh, there should not be violence, uh, and I, I hope there is not violence. He called for a continuation of dialogue to seek an accommodation on other upcoming marches and said attention must focus on the broader political situation. The wider political process still must go on. Uh, we must redouble our efforts uh, following today's events to try to bring uh, satisfactory solutions ultimately. And we must work to find an accommodation uh, that uh, satisfies both communities and certainly that's what we'll be continuing to do in the talks. Meanwhile, Fine Gael leader John Bruton said he deeply regretted that a peaceful solution to the impasse at Drum Cree on the basis of waiving acknowledged rights was not achieved. He said those who show the greatest restraint will ultimately gain most for their cause. SDLP leader John Hume regretted that the two sides had failed to reach agreement in Portadown. He too appealed for restraint. It's time for people to do everything in their power to remain calm and don't be and, and, and understanding the deep anger that exists in the community as a result of what has happened. Uh, I would hope that that anger would not be expressed in any in, in any. What's happening in Belfast? Well, there are sporadic uh, van and uh, car burnings around Belfast. From our position here on top of the RTE building, I can see three or four fires burning, small fires, obviously tires burning, or maybe vehicles behind me. You may be able to see uh, the odd plume of smoke from the Duncairn Gardens district in North Belfast. Generally, though, the city centre is extremely quiet, even for a Sunday night. You and I spoke earlier of the political damage arising from today's drum crew decision. There are more marches to come, with one in Balahi tomorrow, I understand. Is there any positive sign of possible agreement on these? Well, it's going to make it very, very difficult to agree terms on disputed marches, given that nationalist feelings are now so bruised after what happened today. Uh, I think that uh, you can expect to see confrontations of some kind or another, although at the end of the day the situation may be settled, in Balahi tomorrow. And, of course, on the 12th of July you have a large march in Derry and more problematically you have the march on the Ormo Road where we saw some disturbances today that could be a flashpoint so in 